Welcome to Thai Aviation Carriers page. Today, we are here with Kun Thamanit Pipat City. He's an aerospace engineer who works in the US. So we're going to talk about who he is, what he does in the United States. Uh, can you please introduce yourself for us, please? Sure. Yes, my name is Thamanit Pipat City, or nickname is Chen. So um, for the introduction, i probably just talk about my education. Um, well, I graduated um, bachelor degree from Utah State University. Uh, and then I continue my education journey to a uh, master degree and get the uh, earning master of um, science in aerospace engineering from U University of Alabama in Huntsville. So that is my education journey there. And then I continue into the um, career path, which is I'm going to, from college to um, workplaces. Lockwood College is my work first place that I went to. I stayed there for a couple of years and I moved on to GE Aviation and then I still work at the, in the FMS flight management system. Right now I'm, I'm working in the area for about 10 years, pretty much in the uh, predict profile and vertical navigation function. That is kind of my brief introduction. Why did you study aerospace engineering? Well, that's a good question there. Well, when I was young, I, I love airplanes, so that's just the start there. So uh, I love buying a you know airplane model. I collect them all. I love them. So, and then you know when you do that a lot, you begin to thinking about why the airplane can fly in the sky. It's he pretty heavy. They're pretty noisy. Pretty noisy. So I think there's a start there that I'm going into the aerospace engineering because I think you start you know from a young age there from interesting. But I can say that well, in my um, you know. My high school education, I'm not really strong in that area, so I'm thinking, well, well, maybe I cannot be there, but you know, if you work hard enough, if you try hard enough, then you can success. You can be successful. Agreed. Most people are not familiar with flight management system or FMS. Is it something that you are working on? Can you please explain what it is? Sure. Yes, uh, flight management system or FMS, or some people call it the uh, flight management computer. Pretty much, um, since it's a computer there, pretty much it is the computer in the cockpit. So um, that pretty much the easy way to explain um, what, I'm try what I'm doing day to day basis. Pretty much I developed the, um, the computer in the cockpit to helping the pilot navigate to the um, complex airspace. That's what it is to, to start with. If you think back in time, what the pilot navigated through pretty much, you know, use E6B or using a VOR, one VOR to the next VOR. So nowadays, we probably abandon the VOR since it's costly to maintain. So nowadays, we use pretty much a GPS system. So pretty much FMS helping the pilot to navigate to, mo to complex airspace there. And then again, with the uh, flight management system, it's pretty much as big. It's pretty huge system there. So there's a lot of knowledge area that you need to know. So uh, I, again, I can say that I know just really one small area of the flight management system, so uh, which is predict profile. So pretty much just tell the pilot how much the fuel burn, when they're going to get there, ETA, estimate time of arrival, or predict the uh, top of climb point or top of descent point. So pretty much is what I'm doing to help the pilot to make sure that they can make sure that they have enough gas to get there and make sure that they know what time they're gonna get there. So you get, they get uh, accurate data? Pretty much within the time that we have in the system, yes. Could you please talk about the aviation industry in the US? Yes, sure. Um, right now I think the aviation industry in the US is pretty exciting right now because we have a lot of development there. For example, the artificial intelligence, or the AI, so it's in coming into the, um, you know, a lot more of the uh, ground services. And also, um, electrical airplane is coming back, or maybe not coming back, but you know, just starting from new beginning here. And again, with the super, supersonic airplane, or the launch vehicle, which is using the hypersonic area. So pretty much we getting the old technology with the new technology back in time. So I think it's, it is exciting time in the aerospace industry in the state. So you talk about AI. How is it going to affect aviation industry in the future? So I'm thinking that the AI already affected us already, especially on ground, not on the airplane, at the airplane level. Yet I think it still takes a long, long time for AI to get on the airplane. So, but right now, for example, when you book the ticket, 
the airline uses AI to try to figure out when we're going to buy and how much we, we want to buy. So they already figured out that out already. Yes. So I think we cannot escape that since we are, we are a passenger on the airplane. Right, absolutely. But again, I think that the, you probably heard the news of face recognition already. When you try to check in at the airport, they're probably using that more and more. So not because they want to reduce the ground staff or anything, but I think they want to make sure it's secure for everyone at the airport there. It's like seeing a movie there. But nowadays, if you use the face recognition, you cannot escape the truth of the camera there, I think. So um, I think that somehow, if you think that you're gonna lose the job of the AI, I think that no, but you need to develop yourself to make sure that you understand the concept of the AI and also how you're gonna get involved with the AI, how you're gonna work with it, or how you can be a developer of the AI, or how you're gonna go beyond the AI to do a better job. Because I know sometimes humans still want a human touch, they still want to know, to talk to a person. They don't want to talk to a machine. Yes. Sometimes you call in for the service, you get a machine and you wait online for 30 minutes. I think that doesn't make any sense, but if you get the people, you know, I think they may understand you better rather than just machine, they don't even understand the tone of angry. That's right. So um, I think that again, somehow the AI is already in the in aviation industry. It's already coming in on ground slowly or maybe a little bit faster than I think, I don't know. But again, to the AI to go on the airplane or go beyond that, I think it's take a lot of time because of regulation and also with the um, security too, and not just sorry, one aspect of regulation. Security is a big problem for the AI too. Everyone's scared. I understand that everyone think that, hey, we need to have a better security. So I think the aspect of regulation security is gonna be important for the aviation industry and AI. Today we have aircraft that use fossil fuel. What would be the next step? You mentioned about electrical airplanes. Can you please talk about that? Sure, yes. Um, well, if electrical airplane, you know, it's pretty obvious that it's not use fossil fuel that, uh, we, that you mentioned about. So I think it would be uh, helpful to our environment. So I think that would be the next step that we will look into it and see that it's feasible for the commercial or not. I think it's a, some company begins to look into that. They start to build an airplane with the electrical engine on it rather than the you know, fossil fuel engine on it. So I think that would be the next step and see that aviation can be earth friendly, right. if you want to say that, rather than just use the uh, you know, fossil fuel engine for, that we use for a long, long time. So I think that the electrical engine would be the next step, could be one of the alternative option to our current option that we have right now that may be earth friendly or maybe environmental friendly to the earth that we live in right now. So I think it's important to save the earth too and also continue aviation. Supersonic, can it come back? Yeah, sure. I think that uh, aviation industry right now is very exciting. There's a lot of new development out there. So one of them is also a supersonic airplane that is, will come back for the business jet. So I think that, you know, I know that we talk about supersonic airplane like Concorde maybe, um, you know, 20 years, 30 years ago. There's, you know, and it disappeared for my life. So I think that people miss the speed and also, you know, miss the time that they can save during the travel. So um, again, I think it's come back, but also with the, you know, again, with the new technology, with the new engine, or with the new uh, aerodynamics material there that maybe can save some, uh, you know, sonic boom, not break any window. I think it's important to come back. We can grow aviation industry as well, rather than just, you know, we just go at the speed as we are going right now, because, you know, sometimes as a human, we want to go faster. Make it fast. Yep, make yep. it fast or maybe get faster than, mm. than it is right now. So I think it's important to have the, the new technology and bring back the old, you know, the old concept that we had before and then come back in this era right now. And then we can expand or go into the next step of aviation industry there. What do you think about aviation industry in Thailand? Is there anything you want to talk about? Sure, yeah, again, um, well, most people talk about aviation industry, they think about the airline business there. So, well, again, with the airline business, it's about price competitive there, or the operating cost, how much profit that they make. So I'm not, I don't want to talk about that, but I want to talk about the development in Thailand that happened. So, well, I think that, you know, we begin with a small 
step, which is a good step that, you know, for example, the Thai Air Force already build their own jet or build their own airplane. So I think that's a good step to start there. And also, you know, some company in Thailand already built the seaplane developed by themselves. So which is very impressive. And also I know that it's a drone company in Thailand build a drone to use for the architecture purpose there, which is helping the farmer, which is nice. I think we begin a growing with, with the very small step. I think that if we continue developing, I think that we can be successful for the in the aviation industry in the world as well. So uh, again, you know, keep continued development. I think that we can be successful as well as the other nation in the world. Last question. Is there anything you want to recommend for our folks from high school or the one who's going to finish the undergrad pretty soon if they want to study more about aerospace engineering? How can they prepare for it? Well, I think is the, well, this one is a pretty tough question there. Uh, how they prepare for the aerospace um, engineering degree if they want to pursue that? Or study abroad. <laughs> or yes. study abroad. Well, I think I can say two important things in, in life, maybe probably not that important, but again, with, I think that you study hard. You work hard at it. So that's just number one, that's important. And number two is the perseverance, that you need to be perseverant with what you do. I think the recommendation that I have is pretty simple. Number one, have dreams. Number two, have goal. You know, you cannot just have a dream without goal. So you need to have a dream and goal. And also the last one is working hard at it. So, and then you can become successful in any area or in the aerospace industry as well. You know, that's just my rules that I have right now. So again, I'm gonna repeat that to make sure that people can hear it. So number one, have dream. What do you wanna do? What do you wanna be? And then have goal. How are you gonna get there? Give your time if you want. How many years I'm gonna be there? And again, the last one, the most important is working hard at it. Any dream, any goal, you need to work hard at it. Without working hard, you cannot be successful. That would be my recommendation for the, um, for the young generation that I am. <laughs> so to be successful in anything or in the aerospace industry as well. Very good, thank you very much. Thanks again for joining us today. Yeah, my pleasure to uh, to be here. I'm glad that uh, you know um, that you recommend me to be here and that we can chat. I mean, we have a good time together. I say um, thank you so much. For Thank you very much. If you guys like this video, don't forget to click like and share all comments below to our social media right here.